God's wisdom has succeeded in bringing each one of us into life. And God accomplished all of this without our consultation or treasured advice. Even lacking our sage guidance, the Lord God began to knit us together in our mother's wombs. As St. Paul reminds us in the first reading, God's wisdom is always greater than our own. The circumstances of our creation, whatever they might have been, belong to God's providence. Yet we all now benefit from that divine decision. We are young and old, white and black, left-handed and right-handed, but each one of us is the gift of God's design. To see and value each other as a product of God's wisdom is to understand the true meaning of sacred scripture that praises God and his design over all of creation. Nonetheless, God's providence in creating human life is not limited to just us or to those who are like us or pleasing to us. God's wisdom is also to be found in the lives of those who are not like us in any fashion, even to those who may have done terrible things to other people who are, who, or who are just inconvenient to us or unattractive in our opinion. God's wisdom and providence is to be found in every life that he has fashioned. And a dated phrase from my own youth once reminded people that God doesn't make junk. Forty-four years ago, a disappointing Supreme Court decision contradicted providential wisdom and ruled that the Lord does, on occasion, make junk, and that some human lives are worthless. This decision dared to suggest that God's wisdom was mistaken. The pro-life movement must be a constant reminder that God's wisdom is always perfect and that it is we who must acknowledge our misjudgments in ever suggesting that human life is not valuable and the result of divine providence. That decision 44 years ago has spawned other flawed decisions, like the reintroduction of the death penalty in 1976 and the hostile treatment of our immigrant neighbors. One flawed decision has managed to seriously damage our society in many other ways, as it suggested that God was wrong and that we know better. It was an arrogant decision that suggested that we knew better than God, who is the author of all life. Each year since that sad moment 44 years ago, people of faith and goodwill have paused to reflect on the implications of that judgment. We have witnessed the increasing violence that has haunted our world in the slaughter of innocent lives within the womb and the hostility of violence that have occurred 
in the wake of that decision. We do so once again this year as we pray that our society will soon come to its senses and realize that God's wisdom in creating human life is far superior to our decisions to destroy life and to degrade life. St. Paul got it right in our first reading. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. May our nation restore the respect that all human life deserves because it, is, it always comes from the hand of a God who is far wiser and far more loving than any one of us might ever dare to consider themselves. You see, God got it right in the first place. Amen.